What I'm going to do now is re-reduce this survey data reduction function this time again, but this time I will use a map file. I've already got one that I've made up for this job, which has the correct codes, which will go into the correct models. So what I'm going to do is browse for this map file. Browse. And I'm going to copy and paste my Windows path in. Select enter, and there's my map file. ESCnew.mat file is the map file I'm looking for. And now this, when I select reduce, this will re-reduce all these strings and points with this map file. Before I do that, I'll left click on the folder icon and I will open this map file, just so I can show you what it looks like in 12D. So the header's blank. You don't need a header in every map file. The basic tab, So you can see, say a PP string for a power pole, the key is the code, so the code that the surveyor used in the field. When it's reduced with this map file, it will get placed in a model called power in 12D. It will be brown in color. It will be a point. It will have a continuous line style of one. It will not have a weight. And the comment is a power pole. So you can see that they've set the map file up. And you can see a few codes here. If I go to BB, which is for bottom of bank, you can see there's an asterisk or a star after the BB. And this is a wild card. This is used when you use string numbers with this code. So BB01, BB02 and 03, which are different string numbers, will all go into this one model. So the asterisk or the star is used as a wild card. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, you can see the very last line is just the asterisk, the model's junk. So this means that any code that isn't above this line 136, so any of these codes that the surveyor has used, which aren't listed, will go into this junk model. So any new codes that you put in on the fly that are not in your code list and already in your map file, we place into this junk model. If you are to add new codes into this map file, never place any new codes below this line always place it above. You can also see, if I go into the symbols, string, we've got a couple of symbols attached. So you can see that the PP, the power pole string, has a symbol attached to it. And by double clicking, it brings up, you can choose a symbol into any of the symbols in 12D and have that attached to that string. So this will save you doing this manually. The map file does all the hard work for you. You can also make certain strings non-tinnable. So you can see here, any PMs that were picked up are not tinnable. So they have a valid height on it, but they will not be included in any triangulations in 12D. You can also see their fence. It's tinnable, but only the points are tinnable. So the lines in between the points will not be included as break lines in the triangulation. And the last thing you can see under pipes here in the string, you can see we've got a code RCP and that code is given an invert and it's given a diameter of 0.3. So it'll be like a pipe string. So I'll finish on this. And now what I will do is re-reduce this survey using this map file. So I select reduce, the file's reduced. And now you can see that the data flashes and it's now gone off the screen. Because if I go to the minus button, you can see that the previous models are now empty. So now if I go to the plus button, you'll see it's added a couple of, bunch of different models that are used and that are defined by the map file. And there we go. I will turn off my check shots and there's our survey. So now if I do a string inquire, F2, you can see that all the strings are in their different models and have different names. So this is basically what a map file does. And map files are very powerful and very a very handy tool.